reflection trapped in the darkness of the coffee I nurse. The rain turned the lights of the city into a mosaic on the windows. The day's paper lists all the things wrong in the world. The list grows longer by the day. The difference between the morning and the night. Coffee. Whiskey. No other difference. The alarm goes off at 5 a.m. It feels like I just closed my eyes. It's dark. I sit up on the bed in the gloom. I get up, I shower. The driver waits for me downstairs, takes me to the oldest house. An old man stares at me in the car window. It's raining. It's dark. Late at night, he brings me back here. It's not a home. It's a room where I sleep in. Waking up just as tired as I was before going to bed. Endless grind. Jesse, good to see you. We've got Dylan situated in his containment cell like you asked. I've got medical staff running tests as we speak, and I'd be happy to walk you through the details later. Other than that, what's next? With the slide projector turned off, the hiss are shut out, but we're stuck with the ones already here. We can't lift the lockdown until they're all eradicated. If any hiss ever got out, that would be the end of everything. Eliminating them all will take time. Look, I'll do what I can on my end, but my research is progressing slower than I'd like. I think I can help with that. I am making you the head of research, effective immediately. I want you to use everything the Bureau has, every resource, every confidential scrap of data, and find a way to keep the hiss out for good. That's... A... really? I mean, yes, yes, I can certainly... Yes. <laughs> yes, I accept. You'll do great. Besides, I didn't really have anyone else lined up. I'm honored, Jesse, really. Thank you. Do you remember Mr. Tomasi, the head of communications? The hiss he was changed into showed up in containment, near the turntable. I'll take care of it. That thing's not getting away this time. I've heard reports about his particular use of language and intonation when repeating the hiss babbling. The biological and behavioral distinctions between different hiss corrupted individuals is truly fascinating. I wonder if I could categorize the data. And she's already off on her own thing. How do you feel about me taking over as director? You act like it just happened. You've been director since we first met, remember? I am still thrilled. Nothing's changed. Not for me. But the Bureau has changed. Trench and Darling are gone. Their knowledge, anything not written down, disappeared with them. They knew the Bureau better than anyone. They're the Bureau's past, Emily. We won't operate like they did. We'll learn from their mistakes. We'll be better than they ever were. We won't ever be like them. When the hiss got into my head, I saw some weird things. I think Darling even spoke to me. Does that make any sense to you? Well, 
empirically, no, but phantom voices as well as hallucinatory states are not uncommon here. And considering the forces that Dr. Darling was working with, he could have been transferred to a different plane of consciousness, physically or otherwise. And that doesn't upset you? Oh, very. And the fact that he hid those forces from me, it's infuriating. But Darling's dream was always to look beyond our reality. This time he may have taken a step too far, but as long as his consciousness can perceive his surroundings, I'm sure he's loving it. Maybe Darling was just trying to protect you from the darker side of his work. Fuck that. I'm not a child. Like, don't just assume I'm going to consider something morally repugnant. Which it all was. Which it all was, of course. How was Dylan? The same. I, I can't detect any his activity, but his physiology has certainly been altered by it. And I can't tell if his brain activity is genuine or simply the aftermath of the hiss, like spasms. Dylan could wake up tomorrow for all I know. I really can't say. Then I just have to wait for him. That's fair. He waited a long time for me. Don't worry. We'll be monitoring him around the clock. If he wakes up, we'll be ready. I don't mean that in a hostile way, just... Well, you know. I hear you. My brother isn't exactly popular around here. I hope one day he'll have the chance to change that. So... There was a moment, after Hedron died, that I couldn't feel my powers. The hiss got into my head. Just for a moment. So that explains the HRA outage. Before we knew what was happening, the hiss had us. They were in my head. I saw terrible things. I mean, I was about to go under forever when the hiss was pushed back. The HRAs had come back on. Dylan vanished afterwards, and we fought off the hiss that came after him. So if Hedron's death knocked out the HRAs, that means there must be a new local source for them to relay. Which I'm guessing must be... Me. You. Hedron is dead, assuming that word even applies to a resonant-based life form. But whatever it awakened in you, the power you call Polaris, is still active. Or at least, that's what my instruments are telling me. I don't think we're ever gonna understand all of this. And I'm okay with that. I'm just glad you're here with me. That's good to know. Thanks, Emily. I found Dylan attacking the astral plane and the board. What was he hoping to accomplish? Huh. Since they arrived, his have been corrupting objects of power, which have an inherent link to the astral plane. Maybe their goal was to access the astral plane and the board itself. That still doesn't tell us why. His motives are a difficult thing to work out, but I have been digging through confidential files and noticed a strange gap in knowledge regarding the board. Looks like any data on them has either been deleted or was never gathered in the first place. Then maybe it's time someone looked into that. Maybe it is. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. Please, Emily. Not even as a joke.
guess the Bureau should start looking for a new kind of communications. I took care of the Tomasi problem. Sorry, I forget he was a coworker. Don't apologize. That wasn't the real Tomasi. He died when the hiss got him. You're right. I just didn't want to be insensitive. Sentimentality is a weakness in situations like these, Jesse. That's Bureau 101. I don't think Emily's in danger of being called sentimental. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. Please, Emily. Not even as a joke. <laughs>